delaying anything. This can't be unraveled in six minutes. It took ten years and the best estate planners to put it all together. I'm through waiting, Donald. I'm not getting any younger or any prettier while you stall around. It's been two months. That's so terribly uptown and chic. You take off every Tuesday and Thursday evening to scoot across town and jump on your muscle-bound pinhead between bench presses, I and you want me out of the way? Your vulgar witticisms about the same time I got used to your damn German cooking. I am seeing Karen's attorney tomorrow. She says she can get a filing in three days. Sometimes it's all I can do to keep from knocking you flat in your can. <clears throat> What is it? Excuse me, madam, but Maria and Liliana want to know if it's all right to leave now. And may I drive them home? Yes. That'll be fine, Arthur. That will be fine, Arthur. Princess Grace dismisses her loyal servant. <laughs> This is where your libido is getting its work out. Nice. Now, personally, I think the cutout is over the edge, but nobody ever accused that ape of having any class. Jealousy is out of character. This isn't jealousy, sweetheart. This is a clean-up operation. I can't afford the divorce. You know that. I'm stretched out too far. You take half, and then I'm buried in construction lien and tax attorneys. You'll make out. I know. That's why we have to get you out of the way. someone else's pants.
the truck. Check twice. The keys. She's got the keys. It is approximately 7.05. You are on your way to the dinner. sure that we're still straight. That is a good idea, <laughs> Congressman, because every time a project gets rolling, civil observers get nervous on everybody switching sides. <laughs> Dave. Ah, Dave, this is my hotel manager, Congressman Dave Landon. How do you do? Excuse me. Mr. Iskin, there's a man waiting for you on the mezzanine. Uh, a police lieutenant. <laughs> oh, well, I give up here. Take me away. <laughs> Sir, it's, it's serious. Yes, well, what? What is it? I'd better let him tell you. He's, he's right over here. Excuse me, Congressman. Sure. You Donald Iskin? What is it? Do you live at 8759 Royal Canyon Drive in Beverly Hills? Yes. Yes, I do. What's wrong? Is everything okay? I'm afraid not, sir. I'm Lieutenant Casperson. This is our police psychiatrist, Dr. Yes. Schiff. Please, can we get to the point? A woman was found floating in your pool, sir, about a half an hour ago. I'm afraid it's your wife. Are you sure? One of your employees, a Mr... Arthur Hamilton returned from taking your maids home and found the body. When? Perhaps we could go to your house. We have a few questions. Of course. Whatever you say. Oh, he's good. Very good. I give it a 98 at least. I love the lyrics. Yeah. I could feel the beat. I think I could dance to it. Where's your heart, Lavelle? I leave it in my police locker along with my parade hat and my throwaway gun. Come on, let's give this guy a ride and hear the rest of this prepared material. Perhaps Dr. Schiff could be of assistance. Oh, no, I'll be okay. Just give me a moment, please. I have some questions I'd like to ask. It would help if I could do it here. What time did you arrive at your dinner, sir? I, uh, I slept up seven. Uh, quarter past seven, I'm not sure. Wait a minute. 
Are you asking me for an alibi? We'd just like to know where everybody is, is all. It's pretty standard. What time did she... The timer on your gate, it was run over. The clock said 7.45 when it was hit. If she was murdered, the killer could have hit it on his way in or out. You think she was murdered? Your employee, Mr. Hamilton, says that you and Mrs. Iskin had a fight tonight. Sir, McAdoo wants to talk to you. Excuse me. But that clock was on the wrong time. Now, somebody went to a lot of trouble to run it down to give us a time of death. But it was set on daylight savings time. They never got around to turning it back, according to the gardener over there. So the murder could have gone down an hour earlier, at 6.45 p.m. So what do you say? We can get this guy in the actor's studio or well, what? my guess. He had a fight. Offter. Tried to set up a bad news timetable with his little light timer gag. Didn't figure the gardener would know the time was wrong. Came on with you and started doing this act for us admiring police. Fair enough. Look, Mr. Iskin, on suspicion, make sure you sanitize and Mirandize. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Watch your head, sir. District Attorney prosecuting hotel magnate Donald Iskin for the murder of his wife, Charlotte, called a press conference today and announced a dramatic turn in the murder trial. Coy Steele, winner of the Mr. Apollo contest of 1978, confessed to the killing and waived his rights to an attorney. Well, Iskin's having a pretty good run. We now join Scott St. James with a live update from the Beverly Hills Municipal Court. The DA was surprised today when Donald Iskin was judged not guilty by a jury after Coy Steele, a former Mr. Apollo, came forward and admitted he killed Iskin's wife, Charlotte. Mr. Steele claimed that he had been having an affair with Mrs. Iskin. She had tried to break it off. And in a rage, he had killed her. Mr. Steele says he was in Donald Iskin's pool house and hit her where she fell into Mr. Iskin's pool and... Oh, sir, this gentleman has been waiting over three hours for you. Howdy. Nice to see you. Excuse me. I'm J.J. Starbuck. They messed up on the reservations downstairs there, and well, I've driven over a thousand miles to get here, and Reed have been looking forward to staying in your hotel. Why don't you talk to Mr. Smythe downstairs? He's in charge of the desk. I think he's of an opinion that I don't even have a reservation, but I'm an honorable man, and I'm telling you I had it. I figured you'd want to know about it, me and you can get her straightened out. Mr. Starbuck, is it? Your own Jeremiah. If I give a reservation out to every cowboy that blows into town planning to have one, I'd have a line of very angry people around the block, wouldn't I? But you don't have a speck of trouble here, partner, because I got reservations. Uh, sir, I talked with Helen in records. The computer went down yesterday. It's very likely that some of the names were dropped from the reservation scroll. Okay. Open room 647. I'll be back before 9. Make sure you confirm my reservation at Veer Yard site. I want to thank you a lot. Your Honor, on behalf of my client, Coy Steele, I would like to enter a plea of not guilty. I was notified. I've reviewed the matter of bail. This is a second-degree murder charge. I've read your arguments. Do you have anything to add at this time? No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. I'm remanding the defendant over to the county facility and holding him on a $1 million bond. We'll take a 10-minute recess before taking up the matter of the custody of Charles Winslow, the son of the deceased. Starbuck, wasn't it? You got it. Something about my life that interests you? Matter of fact, it is. Yeah. Been watching you on TV quite a bit lately. And since I was staying over at your hotel and all, I, well, I just wandered over here to pass a little time. Probably go over to the park pretty soon to feed the birds. Say, wasn't that something that Mr. Apollo pleading not guilty? Prize the daylights out of me. How about you? Who the hell are you? Just an old cowboy staying over at your hotel in room 647. Oh, there. Partner, hold on. You 
killed her. You killed her, and you got away with it. And I'm going to kill you if it's the last thing I do. I'm sorry, sir. I was at the drinking fountain. He said he'd wait on the bench. Just get the little creep out of here. After this hearing, he's going to the juvenile lockup till they can put him in a foster home. You won't get away with it. You hear me? You won't get away with killing my mother. I didn't know you had a son. He's not my son. He's Charlotte's by a former marriage. Why am I telling you all this anyway? I mean, he blows into town like some Texas goofball. Everywhere I turn, he's staring at me and grinning. He even made a move on you. Donald, get a hold of yourself. He's got nothing. The plan worked exactly as I said it would. They can't touch you. I suppose you're right, but I just wish he'd get out of my face and go back to Texas and discover another oil well or something. The boy's beginning to panic. Relax. Have I ever let you down? No. Believe me, you're in the clear. All you have to do is keep your head. Maybe you should move up your trip to Europe. There's a lot of work to be done in London to get ready for the Hotel Regency construction. You could be there a year. Maybe you're right. Why don't you take the corporate jet tomorrow? There is one thing I'd like you to do first. I have a surprise for Mr. Starbuck that he will never forget. You knew he was here, didn't you? Maybe. Figures. No, tell him I'm in the Fleur de Lis room when he gets here. Good evening. Get him out of here. He's my foster son now. He has a right to be wherever I am at all times. And right now, that's here at this table with a couple of old money grubbers that are playing the ultimate game of work. How you can do it with the run on my company? I don't know what you're talking about. Talking about 100,000 shares, $2 million worth of Class B common stock, and no control. And I'm much obliged to you. Made about $48 million in the last 24 hours. What do you want from me? What I want, they don't serve at this restaurant. Leave my table. We know you killed her, Don. I'm of the opinion you hit her with a blunt instrument, she drowned in Coy's pool. Then you hauled her back across town and waited for the murder indictment. I've been cleared. I can't be retried. Yes. Now. Well, I want to teach you a little something about the law. You're right. You can't be retried again for... Murder one. Been clear to that. But you can be tried for conspiracy to commit murder if I can prove you had an accomplice. An accomplice? Who? Who would be my accomplice? To try Verna McKinnon. Why would she assist me in murdering my wife? Because I think the two of you go a long way back. Back to Minnesota. And once I can prove that, that's going to open up a whole lot of what ifs, maybes. You think you know everything. But there's a sinker or two you can count on. Now, if you're as wise as you think you are, you'll go home and save your company. See, I heard that Vernon McKinnon was married once. Charles tells me that you had a former marriage. Now, what if I could prove that you were Vernon McKinnon's ex-husband? Then what if I could prove that she stuck around after the divorce and quarterbacked your rise to power? And then what if I could prove that she's still a silent partner in all of your companies? Be a pretty strong motive for her helping you to murder your wife, wouldn't it? Now, of course, I'm just fishing, mind you. I think you're going to have a hard time proving anything because there are a few things you're going to have to deal with. Mr. Riskin, Sergeant Marshall, burglary. Your hotel security called us that your office has been broken into. That's right. And I think that this was the man, and I want him arrested. <laughs> that old phone there, partner. A lot of my corporate papers were stolen. And I think Mr. Starbuck is trying to find out my resources so he can prevent me from making a run on his company. <laughs> a fascinating bit of fiction there, isn't it? Let's find out. Now we know what that fellow was doing in our room. You're under arrest for robbery? You want to turn around? Put your hands behind your back, please. Somebody want to call the pounds, have them come get this dog? I might have underestimated you. Adios, Tex. It's off. Have a nice flight, sir.
get the hell out of here. Yes, sir. Sir, look. 